in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. He says, I am the Lord that healeth you. I am the Lord that healeth you. Now, this is so powerful. The next one says, your day shall be 120 years. And this is Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. You shall be buried in a good old age. You should be Genesis. buried. You said Genesis you should, 6? The one I, I just did before that, before this one. Oh, okay. And which one are you doing now? Genesis chapter 15 and verse 15. Okay, you shall you. be buried in a good old age. Okay. Now, Helen, stop me anytime you want to. No, go ahead. You should be buried in a good old age. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 15. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. Write this down. Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalms. In verse 16, Psalms 91 in verse 16, he said he will satisfy you with long life, and he will show you his salvation, his healing, his goodness, his soundness, his wholeness. See, God don't want you sick, and God does not want your life cut short. He intends for you to live out your whole entire life life span. Okay? That's, that was God's intentions. And when you begin to get this in your spirit, you say, well, how do I get it in my spirit? Open your mouth and begin to speak it and speak it and speak it and speak it and speak it. That's how you do it. See, remember, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says, So the faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Well, your faith for your healing will come. When you are speaking this word, and this is why I was encouraging you to write the scriptures down. Go back over them. Read them out loud again and again. And while I'm right here, let me say this to you. When the doctor gives you medicine to take, don't just open your mouth and just pop the thing in your mouth and take it. No. Here's what you want to do. You want to pray over your medicine. What do you want to do? You want to pray over your medicine. And take it in the name of Jesus. It'll work faster and better for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It'll work faster and better. You see, there's a, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Now, you believe in God. You are not in this healing school for nothing. Yeah, the wisdom of God even tell you how to take uh, 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 the, your medicine. Amen. But what I want you to realize is the word of God, the Bible says, is medicine to all of your flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. Yeah. What do you say, Helen? Yes, yeah, I love that. That's one of my... My favorite scripture is Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. Uh, did you just quote that one or did you read it? You pulled it out? I think you did. Proverbs. No. 
Yeah, Proverbs 4 and 20. It says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings, and let them not depart from thine eyes. And keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, your, his words, are life to all of us who find them. And health to all our flesh. Yeah, you were talking about how to take the medicine. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, that came to my spirit as you were saying that. So this is how we do it, by speaking the word of God, right? That's right. That's right. Pray over your medicine. Don't just pop it in your mouth. Pray over it. Listen, you bless your food before you eat it, I assume, right? Or you should. Why why not do the same with your medicine? Amen. You you, you see what I'm saying to you? Do the same with your medicine. We're not against medicine. See, listen, medicine helps you until your faith kick into motion. I want to say that again. The medicine helps you until faith comes, until faith kicks into motion. Thank God for doctors, because if it wasn't for doctors, many people would be dead today, even Christians. Why? Because they don't know how to use their faith. But it's time to learn. Hmm. Amen. It's Amen. time to find out. Too many people are dying prematurely, and they don't have to. That's right. Psalms 107 and verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed you and delivered you from your destruction. High blood pressure, cancer, heart trouble, so forth and so on. Go ahead, Helen. No, I was about to say um, that is an important point you just mentioned, he sent his word, right, right. in Psalms yeah. 107. Yes. But it's, it's just like the pills, the, the medication that the doctor sends. The doctor sends uh, an order to your pharmacy, and, the, and, the, and the, um, they will fill out in that prescription for you. And all you have to do is what? Go and pick it up. And then you must what? You must take it. But the doctor sent sent that order to the pharmacy. And they fill it out. But you go and pick it up and you take it. See, it's just the same thing we're saying here with the scripture. God sent, he didn't send an order to fill a prescription. He didn't send in order to a pharmacy, he sent it to you. He sent it to us. And we must take it. But remember, he didn't send a pill. He sent a word. Yes. So so what do we do with a word? We must what? Speak it. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Me, we must speak that word. Yes. That's how we take it. We take it by, by speaking it. And, and, and that's and that's right. Let's look at it this way. The scripture that you just used in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter four. Now he said, "My son, my daughter, incline your ears unto my saints. Listen to what I have to say to you. <laughs> For yeah. his word." is help to all your flesh. And that word help means medicine. It means Now, here today, you go to the drugstore, the pharmacy, right? Well, Where did we get the word pharmacist from? From the word pharmacia. It means drugs. Pharmacia means drugs. So he sent 
his word. He sent his medicine. Yes. To heal you. You take the medicine. How do you take the medicine of God? Open your mouth and speak it. You have to speak it. You must speak it. That's the way you get it on the inside of you. It's by speaking. And he said, it is health. It's medicine to all of your flesh. So what am I saying? What are we telling you here? It is very important to know and understand how this is supposed to be done. Amen. And let me tell you, on the word of God, it wouldn't hurt to do it two or three times a day. Now, what I love about the medicine of God is this. There are no side effects. You can't overdose on it. You can't take too much. Oh, you see what I'm saying to you? You can't overdose on it. Praise God. So these things are important to your healing. Now, when you're real serious about healing, listen, these things are so vitally important. You don't want to miss it. And you want to do it every day day, every day. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> the last one we did was Genesis chapter 15, the verse 15. You shall come to your grave in a full age like a shark of corn. You shall come to your grave in a full age like a shark of Come, praise the Lord. And that's Job chapter 5 and verse 26. Now remember, I'm using my flip-flop method to help you understand this. I want you to write these verses down. See, look, have you noticed this is the square, the third scripture about you living a long time? A good old age, you think. Amen. A good old age. And this is so important for you to know. See, look, faith come by what you are hearing. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just so tired. Don't, 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 don't do that to yourself. When you do that, do you know what you're saying? Do you know what you, do you know what you're asking for? You are asking to die prematurely. <clears throat> You are asking to die prematurely. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Look what the script look what another scripture says. The Lord is the strength of my life. Didn't it say that? That's right. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my helper. <clears throat> Let him help you. Don't go against him. Don't work against him. Don't fight against him. Let him help you. You say, well, how do we fight against him? Oh, I'm just so tired. Oh, I'm just so tired. Oh, I don't think I can make it. You see what I'm saying to you? No, no. Let me comment on that. Uh, yes. Yeah. When, yeah. Uh, just like a few minutes ago, uh, we were sharing the, we made a contrast between the doctor sending medication to your pharmacy and God sending a word to your body for healing. Mm. And we, 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 we looked at the fact that both of those instructions, you had a part to play in those. Once right. the pharmacy filled it out, you picked it up. You still had to what? You had to take it. You had to swallow it. Same thing with the yeah. word of God. You must speak it. You must speak the word of God. Now, I heard you saying that, you know, you're saying negative things. Yes. Uh, what, what were those negative things you were saying? Repeat that again just now, Larry. I, I'm so tired. 
Yeah. Oh, I don't think I can make it. All right. So here's the point that I'm trying to make right now. I want to show you this. God said, Jesus said, can, can hot and cold come out of the same system at the same time? A- absolutely. You see, you defile, you use your mouth to glorify God by speaking the words that he sent to you. Remember, he sent his word in Psalms 107. He sent yeah, his word 20. to you. Yes. Remember, he sent that to you. He sent that. God sent that to you. He sent his word. Every healing scripture that you find in the in the Bible, he sent that to you. He sent you Proverbs 4 and 20. He sent you Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He sent you uh, 1 Peter 2 and 24. He sent you all those wonderful healing scriptures. He sent you Psalms. 91 and verse 16. He sent you Isaiah. I mean, Genesis 6 and 3. And, and the list goes on and on. He sent you those words so you can speak those words. But if you're going to speak those words in the morning, now I want you to pay close attention and then begin to speak the words Larry just said. Say it again, Larry. I, I don't think I can make it. Uh, oh, this is killing me. That's and then, oh, and when some let me and let me add to the list. Someone comes and asks you, "How you feeling?" Oh, you know, I feel so bad today. I, you know, guys, look at look at what you're doing. You're using your mouth in the morning to speak these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful prescriptions that God sent you. But then throughout the day, when when you feel the pain still racking in your body, you still you open your mouth. And you use your mouth to nullify. You just, when you say how you're feeling and, and what's going on, I'm sick, I'm this, you nullify what God sent you in the morning. It's just That's like, right. it's just like the pills that you took in the morning. The minute you took them, you regurgitated them. The minute yeah. you swallowed them, they came right back up because your stomach yeah. couldn't hold it. The minute you swallowed the medication that the pharmacist prepared for you, you you regurgitated. You just uh, uh, you upchucked it. Whatever terminology you want to use. And so, because you propel, you rejected your body, rejected it. It has no effect on your body, none whatsoever. And I want you to see that this is what happens when you take the word that God sent you, and you speak it in the morning. And then before the day is out, you're going right back to saying how you feel. Remember, child of God, we take it in faith. That's we right. take this medication by faith. And what does that mean? When you say the word of God, like, for instance, let's say, let's do it. First uh, Peter 2.24. What does this say? But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, where would he love us? Even when we were dead sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. And through his stripes we are healed and made whole. That's what mm-hmm. it says. And by his stripes we are healed and made whole. Now you just said that. Now you take that by faith. And then at the end of saying that, you say, Father, I believe I receive. I am whole. I am healed. I am made whole. You have to stay there. You cannot use your mouth to begin to talk about how it feels now. That's right. Because when you do that, you just you just threw it up. You rejected it. Your body rejected it. You 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 upchucked it. You you whatever words you want to use, it didn't stay down. You vomited it right back up. It didn't do you any good. It couldn't even, you didn't hold it. Are you seeing it? You've got to begin to understand when you speak the word of God. You can't speak anything else. Don't speak your feelings. Because now you're walking by faith. See it? Yeah. That's and right. the longer you stay there and stay there and say, I know it hurts. I know it, your body is still feeling the pain of it all. I know that. 
I know it, it's still there. I understand that. But remember now, we're trying to walk by faith. And when we walk by faith, that means we're not going to give in to our feelings and let our mouths speak what we are feeling. And child of God, if we stand there every day, every morning, I know you get weary. You said, oh, man, am I lying? You're not lying. You're walking by faith because the Bible says the word of God, Jesus said, he called those things that what, Larry? That, that be not as though they as were. Though they, as though they were already. As though they were already done. That's what faith is. Faith That's is right. calling those things that be not as though they are already done. So what is what are we saying? You're calling that diagnose whatever the doctor says, the diabetes, the cancer, you know, the migraine headaches the knee pains, the back pains, whatever it is. He, you go to the doctor to find out what it is, and you want to do that because he mm-hmm. knows. He can tell you exactly what it is from all the testing. But once you get that information, now you go, you tell that I know what to do. I'm going to go home and put the word of God on this situation, and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop taking the medicine of God. You can take the medicine the doctor gave you as well. But as Larry said, take it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Mix That's faith right. with it. As you swallow that pill, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. My body is healed according to First Peter 2.24. See it? That's how you do that. That's so you're right. taking both of them. We're not telling you to throw your pills away. But we are telling you it's to, it's to what? Fortify. Fortify those pills with the mix it with the word of God. So you take that pill, you swallow it with the water, and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and what are you doing? Now you're gonna quote first Peter two twenty four. And by his stripes I am healed. Thank you, Father. I believe it, I receive it. And as the day goes on, if the pains persist, you just remind God that remember I got healed this morning and Father, I'm just thanking you for my healing. You see, child of God, it's vitally important that you keep your faith confession consistent with the word of God. It doesn't matter how you feel. Remember, we're not walking by our feelings anymore. What does that mean? We quote that, but do we know what, do do we really understand what that means? Here's what it means when you say I'm walking by faith. That means you're not going to let your mouth speak what it feels anymore. You're not going to let your mouth speak what you see anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing plenty. Well, yeah, but guess what? I'm not going to let it come through my mouth because what we've learned is that your heart will grow whatever your mouth says. Yes, that's good. Oh, Lord Jesus. Your heart will grow that up. You keep walking around saying what Larry said, that example he gave was excellent. I feel so, I just feel so bad. I'm hurting all over. And we know you're hurting. I know it. I understand it. Child of God, we're not telling you anything Larry and I don't deal with. We deal with this. But we know how to get rid of it. And what we're doing is we're sharing it with you. This is how we live. As becoming born-again believers in Christ, this is how we live now. This is how you live now. Yes. That's right. That was a very good example, Larry, because oftentimes we fall there. We fall short. We love the Lord with all our heart. We love the Word of God with all our heart. But unless we know how to apply it and how to walk in it, how to maintain it, it is not going to profit us anything. That's right. Not one thing. Not at all. We can't let our mouths fall back into those negative confessions. Let me say it this way. You can't let your mouth by itself decide what you're going to have. Jesus said you will have whatsoever you want. 
whatsoever what you, you say. What you say. So you can't let your mouth just do the deciding all by itself. Well, especially especially when your mouth is going to just continue to speak what you feel. Yeah. Your mouth should never be used to speak what you feel as becoming born again believers in Christ. Your your lifestyle is a faith walk now. Your walk is a faith walk. Child of God is all by faith. Everything if it isn't faith, the Bible says it's sin. That's right. Whatever. If you're not, faith. if you're not gonna walk by faith, you're walking in sin. So we owe it to ourselves to find out, to understand. That's where God is leading us in 2020: a better knowledge, a better understanding of spiritual things. That's that's what 2021 is all about. You want to stay tuned to this ministry. As we go into 2021, we're going to be talking about spiritual things and, and, and laying them out where you can actually pick them up and walk it out day by day because this is what God is giving us. This is where he's wanting us to go. Revelation knowledge is going to be pulling out <clears throat> like we've never seen it before. He wants us to understand. Knowing the word of God is one thing, but really understanding it for ourselves that's a whole different arena where we're going in 2021. And it starts with our healing. It starts right there. Because what can we do if we're sick? Mm-hmm. How can we help mm-hmm. our children if we're, if we're bedridden? How can we do anything for anyone? You can have trillions of dollars. And I, and I pray, God, that you do. Because we need money to live in this world. But my point that I'm making now, what good is it going to do us, Larry, if we're sick? Yeah. How can it profit us? How can it profit us if we're too sick to spend it or enjoy it? So you see, you want your body healed. I don't know where you are. I don't know what the doctor has said to you, but I do know this. Whatever it is, whatever diagnosis it is, if you will get your faith right, if you will say, I believe the word of God no matter what, if I can find it in the Bible, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to believe this word. I'm going to speak this word. I'm going to live it. I'm going to speak it every day of the world. Child of God, you're going to begin to see yourself healed. I know it. You're going to begin to see yourself getting up. You Day by day, you're going to start feeling better. You, you, you're going to start sensing things that you haven't felt before, but it is all up to you as it relates to, are you going to, is it going to be applicable for you? Is the word of God applicable for you? Mm-hmm. Because it can be, it can be. That's why Jesus died. He died to provide this for us. He died yeah. to provide it for you and for me, for each of us, but we must open our hands. And we must receive it by faith. That's right. That's right. You you see, sickness and disease did not show up. It did not come into the world until Mr. and Mrs. Adams sinned. Amen. Once they sin, here comes sickness and disease. Here come death. You got what I'm saying to you? That's when all that stuff came in. It was not in the original plan of God. Now, Amen. Not medical doctors. Do not throw away your medicine. Take your medicine, but take it in the name of Jesus. Now, I said that again to say this. Medicine does not heal you. I want to say that again. See that prescription the doctor gave you? It's not designed to heal you. It acts as a band-aid to give you some relief. It covers it up. Now, you use the scripture already. I want to bring it to you again. Psalms 107 and verse 20. He sent his word 
and healed you and delivered you from your destruction. Now, notice what the doctors do. They give you a prescription. Again, don't stop taking your medicine. Keep taking it. I can't stress that too much. But listen, God sent his word to you and healed you. It got down to the root cause. And it out. Let's take, let me use one everybody can understand. For instance, let's take glasses. If you wear glasses and they are prescription glasses, the glass is an aid to you. As long as you wear the glasses, they help you see. But have you noticed it never cured the problem of you not seeing right? The glasses just help you to see. It don't straighten anything out. Amen. It don't change anything. If it did, you wouldn't have to keep wearing them. God sent his word. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, it says the seed is the word. You cannot be healed without the seed of the word. You cannot experience your deliverance without the seed of the word. He sent his word or he sent his seed and healed them. Listen, you need a seed for about anything. Even if you're going to prosper, you need a seed to prosper. Was you aware of that? Hmm. Yes, yeah, amen. Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. In what? In faith. Amen. Believe as prophets, so shall you prosper. You see the difference? Absolutely. That's the seed. You want wealth? Wealth must be planted. You want to be healed? Your healing must be planted. And that's why you're in this healing school every week. We are planting the seed. We are planting the seed. We are watering the seed. The Bible says you go to bed and wake up day and night, and the seed bring it forth. It springs up, and you don't even know how. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying to you here? Amen. The word of God is the seed, folks. It's the word. It's the word. And that's what you want. Uh, this is so powerful. And God wants you to know. Let's do about two or three more before we stop. Okay? Amen. Oh, uh, one second here. Now. Remember in Luke, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, Jesus said, who said it? Jesus said it. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is up on me. Amen. Why is he up on you, Jesus? Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. And he named some things. He have sent me 
that preach the gospel to the poor. Well, what is the gospel? The gospel is good news. So what's good news to a poor person? You don't have to be poor any longer. No, you don't. Now, in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 and 14, it says Christ have redeemed us. What did he do? He redeemed us. What did he redeem us from? From the curse of the law. Amen. Where did he redeem us from? From the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Hmm. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Folks, you didn't hang on nobody's tree. You didn't hang on the cross. Jesus did. He took the curse in his own body. What am I saying? Right now today, you are healed. Because Jesus took your sickness and he bore your infirmities in his own body. Uh, yes. And what did he say? By his stripes you were what? You were healed. Now the curse consists of what did he redeem you from? Mm. Poverty? You've been redeemed from poverty. What? You mean to tell me I'm not a poor woman? I'm not a poor man? No, you're not. Jesus redeemed you from it. Amen. He, I told you you were healed. Praise God. And spiritual debt. And spiritual hmm. debt. You were not meant to live without Jesus. Say something else. You was not meant to live with sickness and disease in your body. Because if you get Amen. too much in there, it's going to kill you. That's why he sent his word and healed you. That's why. But see, again, all these things came in when Adam sinned in the garden. None of these things were, 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 were here before that. Not one of them. Not one. Isn't that mm. something? Amen. Now listen. The scripture says, again in Job 5.26, when I see the blood, I'm sorry, Exodus 12.13, when I see the blood, I will pass over you should not be upon you to destroy you. That's Exodus chapter 12 in verse 13. Okay? Amen. Now, I will take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days I will fulfill. Exodus 23, 25, and 26. I will not put any disease up that you are afraid of up on you, but I will take all sickness away from you. Deuteronomy is chapter 7 and verse 15. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 9 to 21, look what he says. It will be well with you. And I will prolong your days like the days of heaven up on the earth. I turn the curse into a blessing unto you because I love you. Deuteronomy 25 and verse 5. Now, I trust that you are writing these things down. Now, listen. You got to believe that you received, too. You believe you Amen. received your healing. Amen. Okay? This is so, so vitally important. I'm telling you, you need this. Look what he says here. I have redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. Deuteronomy 28, 61, and Galatians 3, 13. As your days, so shall your strength be. Deuteronomy 33, 25. 
I have found a ransom for you. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child, and you shall return to the days of your youth. Oh, glory to God. Did y'all get that? Amen. And that's in Job chapter 33, verse 24 and 25. Job chapter 33, verse 24 and 25. See, all things are possible to you that believe. Mm. How, would you like to, how would you like to return to the days of your youth at the age that you are now? But you are Amen. young in body. Glory to God. Do you see it? Amen. This is what, this is what he's telling you here. And he wants you to have faith for it. How do you have faith for it? Read Job 33, verse 24 and 25 again and again and again. As this message right here, um, go into the podcast. You want to get over there and listen again and again and again. Praise God. Are Amen. you getting this? Amen. Now, I have found a ransom for you. You notice what his name is? It's Jesus. That's the ransom. Praise God. Isn't it beautiful? As it is. I have healed you and brought up your soul from the grave. I have kept you alive from going down into the pit. Songs, and that's found in Psalms 30, verses 1 and verse 2. Glory to God.